So welcome back to the Computomics podcast, everyone. This week, we'll be following up on our December webinar. We had a lot of participation and a lot of questions come in during the discussion. And since we couldn't answer them all during the call, we have put together this podcast to give all of our listeners the opportunity to get more clarity on our Exceed Score product. And for those of you that were in the webinar, we hope you enjoy the podcast. And for the rest, feel free to follow along and also download the free version of our webinar on our website. So today we have our Managing Director, Sebastian, our Project Manager, Christian, and the Exceed Score expert scientist, Bjorn, on the podcast with us. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello, Emma. Hello. So first of all, Christian, maybe you can give us a general introduction to Exceed Score. Yeah, sure. So Exceed Score is our solution to help growers achieve their goals more efficiently. It's not just a genomic prediction software solution. It's an all-encompassing service that accompanies the breeder throughout the entire breeding process. We support breeders in creating the best data sets for performing phenotype prediction, um, in identifying the training population, in taking environmental measurements, and so on. With ExceedScore, our customers also get access to our team of machine learning and bioinformatics experts, who are in close contact with the breeder and are supporting them throughout the whole process. Our aim is to enable the breeder to make informed decisions based on the best possible data and analysis possible. At the algorithmic heart, Exceed Score is a machine learning based technology that um, incorporates heterogeneous data, genotypes, phenotypes, and environmental measurements to make accurate phenotype predictions. Great. And one of the follow-up questions was, does the use of these machine learning algorithms select primarily for GCA, SCA, or both? And then how? That's also a good question. So GCA and SCA are both standard results from our prediction. As I mentioned earlier, we simulate the cross for each line with every other line that has been genotyped. For each cross, the phenotype of thousands of offspring that reflect the genetic variation as best as possible is predicted. So for every line, we know the performance of hundreds of thousands of its possible offspring. This provides the breeder with a very good estimation of the line's combining ability and its suitability as a crossing partner to produce superior offspring or to be used as a parent in the next cycle. If a line with um, below average performance produces superior offspring in specific combinations, we speak of good special combining ability. Okay, awesome. And can this machine learning algorithm also take things into account such as epigenetic levels? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, Our technology can integrate very heterogeneous data. In addition to genotype and phenotype data, any external factor or characteristic that can be measured can be integrated into the model. We often use temperature, precipitation, or soil type measurements to increase the prediction accuracy. But it's also possible to integrate genomic characteristics, such as expression data or methylation states. We've developed Methylscore, a proprietary solution for fast, sensitive, and statistically sound epigenetic analysis. We use spy sulfide, whole genome, PicBio, enrichment sequencing, and ChIP-seq data to identify differentially methylated regions and histone modifications. Those measurements have um, already successfully been integrated in Exceed Score for clients. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really value about Exceed Score is just its holistic nature and the variety of data that we can integrate in for our clients, depending on what's important for them or what really brings them better results and better prediction values. So thanks for that answer. Now I will turn to Bjorn, since you actually work with a lot of our clients to help them design the solutions that fit their breeding programs and fit their needs. And one of our attendees asked, why predict when you can do the real stuff? And what do you have to say to that? 
Yeah, so uh, great question. So in short, um, it saves money. So um, each plant that goes in the field takes up limited space and that in the end costs money. Um, plant breeding is complex and if you want to cross all possible parents, it will lead to an explosion of combinations. And with um, computer programs or um, tools like Xscore, we can simulate millions and billions of potential offsprings and predict the performance. And having all of these possible crosses eases the selection of possible parents and um, the determination of the size of crossing blocks. Okay. And on the back of that question, we had a number of um, questions related to the types of crops we can work with, whether we can tackle vegetable breeding, if, um, if we can tackle different breeding schemes, for example, with multi-parental crosses, if they qualify, what can you say about the general nature of the breeding programs that we can work with and the advantage of exceed score maybe for, uh, for breeding programs that maybe don't qualify as your typical assumption um, of what fits? Yep. So we can in general work with um, every type of uh, breeding program and crop. Um, some more complex um, problems require us to fit um, our approach to the specific problem or um, adapt a new breeding scheme in, um, in exceed score. Um, we had projects where we worked with uh, multi-parent uh, populations, um, like with uh, magic populations. And um, here um, we can predict either individual steps in the program, but also uh, jump generations and test all possible combinations there, which um, again can only be done because we're doing these larger scale simulations. Um, for um, uh, breeding types like um, vegetable breeding, um, these are mostly complex because it requires the optimization of multiple traits at once. And um, we also want to keep or introduce disease resistance in the breeding program. Okay. Um, and as a final question your way, how long would it take to realize these benefits of exceed score for these breeders? Um, so our uh, recommendations for crosses um, will impact the next cycle directly. Um, some of the predictions, um, especially those for um, complex breeding schemes, um, like the one mentioned above, um, they um, will um, manifest later in the program. Um, but since we can also apply a stricter selection on the way, we um, see immediate benefits. Um, we also help breeders directly by setting up the program for predictions if they just started generating data and don't have a feeling how to set up the crossing blocks and need um, help in organizing the data. Yeah, and I think this is something that I know our clients uh, have found really helpful is the concept is our ability to lead them into the development of their data, the structure of their data that can really help them be successful in these machine learning predictions. Because, of course, to take advantage of any machine learning technology, it's important to assure quality, quantity and relevance of data. So for this, I would probably turn to Sebastian. Um, we had a lot of questions come in related to whether or not we can tackle some of these initial challenges for our clients and what happens if someone is really not sure if their data qualifies do we offer any sort of onboarding uh, packages to help ease clients into exceed score or prepare them for exceed score down the road yeah exactly that's what we are doing for our clients so um, as you mentioned uh, many people are unsure about the kinds of things that um, they already have in place or the kinds of data that is required for them to get started with exceed score and that's uh, why we've put into place a um, initial consulting package where we take stock of what they already have of uh, potential recommendations that we would give if any additional data should be generated and we also integrate uh, potentially available um, usually environmental measurements that are publicly available. So for example, weather station data or satellite images. And um, integrating all of that um, can be, uh, first of all, a challenging task for um, any individual group. And we've uh, put into place protocols uh, where we've done this several times before for different crops and um, breeders can really take full advantage of exceed score 
uh, when they are sure that we've taken stock of their data sets, that we've curated them and made sure that they are applicable for machine learning and uh, cleaned up in such a way that um, also gives them maybe additional um, utility out of historic data that they've had um, only stored in Excel files or maybe even non-digitally before and um, also gives them access to the relevant data from public sources. So what I hear you saying is that we help with curation, quality, and structure of data on their side, but we also bring data from our side that can aid in advancing their goals, such as weather or remote sensing data that can accelerate the data that they already have available. Did I get that right? Exactly. So the uh, advantages really are in um, getting an assessment of uh, what you already have, whether the uh, data types and um, technologies used to generate this data of phenotypes and genotypes uh, is sufficient and um, useful, usable for machine learning approaches. And um, we also uh, help with aligning the data that's available already uh, from public sources or from our internal databases with this um, specific request and uh, make sure that um, people can really uh, use these data sets that they have and uh, data sets that we help them generate to the fullest extent. Great. And I assume that the first step is analyzing and qualifying our client or customer's data on a number of parameters. And I think that's where a lot of our um, callers on the webinar also had questions. Now, the next question is kind of accumulation of all those questions put together, but maybe you can give us an answer to some of these in a general sense and also the ones that require specific answer also answer in a specific way. But the questions that came in were essentially how many of each parameter do I need? How many years of data? Um, do I need pedigree information? How much genotype information? How does my input data have to look like? How much progeny do we need? Um, what would you say sort of cumulatively to those types of questions? Um, and how do we place inbreds into heterotic groups? Could you give us a sense? Yeah, so um, in general, that's exactly what our initial assessment um, and scoring of the data sets that are available, uh, what that part is for. That's uh, where we take stock, where we look at all of the different um, data sets that are already available at um, the breeding program in general and its structure and what kind of data would be helpful uh, to have and um, where we also give answers to these very specific questions, some of them uh, which are only applicable if you're um, breeding in a certain way or breeding a certain kind of crop. And um, so in general, for example, we don't need any pedigree information to uh, predict um, machine learning is based on uh, using uh, the influence and contributions of each um, genetic marker uh, on the phenotype and of the environmental information on the phenotype. So these um, data sets are what we need. Um, we don't need any kinds of uh, pedigree information or um, previous information about um, the um, progeny uh, or anything like that. So uh, the kind of um, data sets that we find uh, in most cases are already sufficient to get started. Uh, so I guess that's the good news for everyone listening. If you're unsure whether your data really fits, um, we can work, uh, take a look at that. But in most cases that we found, um, the data that is available gives us uh, a start to using these for our types of analyses and uh, we can get um, going right away, including uh, some recommendations about maybe some additional data sets that are very easy to obtain in addition to what you already have and making sure that those are available then from every cycle into the future. Right. I guess in a lot of sense, it is about refinement from then on. So it's about what would make the predictions even stronger going forward, not necessarily from the sense that the data is not enough, but let's make it even stronger over the coming breeding cycles. And by supplementing with some of the data that we can bring and some of the sources that we can integrate. And in that sense, I think it will be what follows kind of logically for me is a question about um, what happens if there is a low percentage of heritability? Um, 
do we consider this, how do we consider this for selection? I think what the speaker was referring to was if your trait has low heritability, the predictions are generally poor. And then the question refers to whether or not we have had the same problem and how we tackle this. And um, maybe a, the right person to answer this would be now Bjorn again. Um, yeah, so the problem that um, all methods will have with uh, low heritability is that you're essentially looking for a signal um, that can't be seen. And um, we also can't kind of magically um, make this appear, but we have methods of integrating additional data to um, boost the um, amount of information. Like if we include environmental data or data about the field, then this um, then adds to the uh, the information that we get in our data set and improves prediction accuracy. So you mean that if a trait is low genetic influence and high environmental influence and we add more of that environmental data in, it will bring to the surface the real influence on the trait and then we can make suggestions, for example, to uh, to express this trait, it needs to be in this specific environment and this environment can be found in these other fields or locations did I get that right? Um, yes, and um, we also have uh, methods to um, gather these environmental informations um, from our side. So even if a client does not have um, these informations at hand, we can collect them for them and help them um, refining um, their, their data sets. Okay, fantastic. And maybe from Christian, since you manage a lot of our projects, um, and you understand the value of perpetually meeting goals. A lot of our breeders um, on the call said that they have a specific rate of genetic gain to support. How do we really use exceed score to support these goals when they are so measurable and such a uh, pressure for these breeders? Yeah, exactly. Um, so the success of a genomic prediction assisted breeding program depends largely on a good training set that represents the genetic diversity within the population. And with sufficient data and the simulation of millions of offspring, we can considerably increase the potential to identify new allele varieties, as we don't only look at the top crosses, but at all possible crosses. Um, we are therefore able to identify these unique combinations that not only give uh, you an incremental gain, but that lets you make a really big step. Mm, we can also help the breeder in integrating additional lines from other breeding programs. We will test their offspring's performance from crosses with all other lines, and we'll be able to identify new lines that advance um, the breeding program. Oh. Would you say that this can also be used to help uh, companies or breeders take advantage of the fact that there are other breeding programs which also have strong genetics that are working alongside them and whose information they were not able to integrate previously, such as from other locations or um, from other goals? Is this something that Exceed Score can also help our clients with? Yeah, exactly. So if you have um, lines from other breeding programs or even um, publicly available lines from um, competitors and you have their um, genotype information, you can try to simulate um, their offspring's genetics and um, by doing so build a model that um, accurately predicts their phenotype. And so you can um, integrate or you can test the integration of, um, of different lines into your breeding program and get a sense of the potential success you have with them. Got it. So we can help integrate genetics across um, breeding programs. Great. And along the same lines, Bjorn, to ensure uh, to ensure success for our clients, how do we really consider potential epistatic effects and how does Exceed Score separate and interpret it? Um, so, um, Sebastian mentioned before that um, 
the way our machine learning approach works is that it considers all possible combinations of markers. Um, this is a problem for statistical methods because of the complexity of the problem. But uh, machine learning and deep learning methods um, have ways to solve this. Um, we can then look at the problem or look at the, uh, the model and see which of the markers will be um, used together by the model and have a combined influence that outweighs the individual influences. And as uh, Chris mentioned before, this then helps us to find um, offsprings that significantly outperform uh, the parents. Okay, awesome. Uh, well, that will wrap up the question portion. And to wrap it up, Sebastian, can you let our listeners know how to reach out, who to contact if they have questions about working together, pricing, or really any of our products? Um, and that'll wrap it up. Yeah, so um, we're happy to discuss uh, your breeding programs um, because everything that we've seen so far uh, seems to be really unique. And we're happy to have a direct conversation with you about your breeding programs and goals, um, about the data that you've already collected and how that ties in into possible applications of Exceed score. And uh, to do that, uh, feel free to reach out to our um, head of business development, Ruth Mays. She's um, an expert um, already on this specific product and um, can help you um, phrase these uh, questions and um, we will then uh, start with a um, quote for maybe the initial assessment or if you've already done that with us um, we will start with a quote for the breeding program at hand and um, the pricing scheme uh, that we employ is a software as a service model so you're essentially subscribing to uh, receiving regular predictions from us for a specific breeding program and um, we also have um, software development, systems development uh, integrated there. So if specific uh, questions come up in your breeding programs and in the data that you're generating, uh, we're happy to integrate that. And um, we also have regular workshops with our clients where we uh, talk about uh, possible expansion, integration of additional datas, uh, data sources and um, integration of uh, data from uh, maybe other public repositories, um, for example, from satellites or weather stations. And um, making sure that uh, this all fits together is uh, really a team effort. So I'm really uh, happy to um, have uh, Björn and Chris uh, on this uh, podcast as well, because they uh, usually look at the data and um, our clients' reading programs um, together. And um, together with Ruth, we'll make an assessment of um, what's needed. And um, so you've already heard them uh, describe some of their uh, daily tasks and uh, how they approach these individual questions that we receive from breeders. And then uh, you'll also see how we're able to help you and your breeding program. So please get in touch with Ruth and uh, then we'll help you move your breeding programs along. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what a great point, Sebastian. We have an awesome team. We really value our client's success and we really go on this journey with them and we really dedicate um, our efforts to making sure that they are successful and that our products meet their specific needs and where they're really imagining uh, their breeding programs going. And that's really a large aspect of what we do and uh, the way that we sort of uh, take care of our clients. like. Yeah. So thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate your time today. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Yep. Thanks, Anna. Yep. Thanks. Bye. So I hope everybody enjoyed that Q&A session. I know the format is a little bit different than our usual interview, but I think it's important that we addressed a lot of those questions that came in during the webinar. If you have any additional questions, always feel free to email us info at computomics.com. And in the show notes, there will be Ruth's email address and a way to get in touch with her to schedule a time to talk about your breeding program and your breeding goals. And thank you again for joining us and we hope to see you for the next episode. Episode.